I used some rectangular tubing to create the door sills and they do add quite a bit of strength. And as it turns out, keeping the original floor was not going to be an option. The bulkhead and the firewall had to be moved over to accommodate the fact that the drivetrain is offset to the passenger side. And in addition to that, some rust areas were going to have to be repaired anyway. To create my cab mounts, I decided to use 3 inch exhaust pipe. So I welded a washer and a nut to the inside so I can just run a bolt right up through the isolator and, uh, and catch the cab. As you can see, I was having trouble with my welder. It turned out to be the core for the wire feed cable was causing the problem. I put together a wooden buck using plywood and 2x4s so I could shape my transmission tunnel. I think it's how the old timers used to do it. Now, this might have to be a prototype. We'll see how it fits. I had to scab in a piece in this bulkhead area so it would mate up properly with the front of the transmission tunnel. The shape had to correspond to the five-speed transmission I was going to use. It's an NV3500 transmission that came out of a five-speed V8 Dakota. So all you really need to do this work is a, um, well, a cutoff wheel, a MIG welder, and a, and a Sharpie. That's all you need. So I had, to, I had to cut this part out here because this is where my cab mount is. And where the outrigger on the frame is carrying the cab mount, you know, the cab mount goes across and the frame's about here. This piece, the original piece, was going to hit that outrigger on the frame. So... This had to get modified anyway, so I just cut out whatever was rusty and, and, replaced, uh, and replaced it with new metal. Now this, this whole area back here was pretty bad. There was a lot of, a lot of little holes in it, and uh, so it's not really worth saving. So it was best just to cut the, the whole thing out <clears throat> and replace it with new, new metal. I took an old excavator bucket pin I had and welded a piece of angle iron onto it so I could stick it in the vise. That way I could make my uh, curves on my patches. So I'm using my handy little Eastwood clamps here to hold this panel in place while I weld it in. And once again we're using the little clamps from Eastwood Company. They're not sponsoring this, I just think people should have them. And that's where you find them. Because there's curvature in the cab, I'm starting out in the corner up here, and I'll uh, just tack weld that about maybe six or eight inches out from the corner, and then move the clamps and just keep tacking it and, and conform to the, the curve of the cab. I figured it would be a lot easier to weld these panels on. I tip the cab up on its up on the firewall, kind of stand it on its nose. Those little clamps that I use that I got from uh, Eastwood, they do a pretty good job of keeping everything flush. I really like that. Here's the Dakota master cylinder and brake booster and the clutch reservoir and master cylinder and the pedal assembly which is also out of a Dakota had to modify that a little bit to make it uh, fit under the dash had to shorten this up right in here and I cut this off and now I gotta now I gotta figure out how to mount that to the dashboard I'll probably have to make an additional bracket off the bottom of the dashboard so I had to drill some holes in the firewall to uh, accommodate the brake booster and pedal assembly and clutch master cylinder. And here's where we're mounting the um, brake booster and the reservoir for the hydraulic clutch. So what I did was modify a Dakota bracket to hold to suspend the pedals and uh, it's going to work fine. 
we bolted it through the firewall, drilled all the holes and everything, so it's pretty much pretty much ready to go. So here I'm modifying the radiator support from a Dakota, so the tops of the uh, support will mate up to the nose of the 57. So I just fabricated these out of angle steel so they'd be a little stronger instead of using sheet metal. I thought it might be smart to weld nuts on the back, make it a little easier when I'm uh, mounting the fenders and everything else. It'd be one less thing to fumble with behind the bracket. So this is the modified radiator support in place, and it's just holding up the nose here. Um, and I had to test fit it to make sure the bolt holes were going to line up after I did my welding, but uh, everything's fine, which is good, reassuring. But those bolts will come out. Uh, when I put the fenders on, those bolts will also go through the fenders. So these pieces here are going to have to get cut out because they're going to be in the way of the Dakota radiator. Encountered a little bit of an issue putting the radiator in. It turns out when the hood is shut, part of the inside of the hood is going to hit the radiator cap. So I had to cut a little area out on the inside. You can see it used to be like that. And so I had to cut a little section out and fabricate some pieces to receive the cap. So I had to make up a couple little pieces out of my 18 gauge steel to fit in here like so. So when I weld that all in there and grind everything off, it'll it'll work pretty good. Mm -hmm. 